Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reviewing Deadhead by Sean Hudson. Last year I actually read Erebus by Sean and I really enjoyed it. In fact, it earned itself number four in my top novels that I read last year. And I've been slowly accumulating loads of Sean Hudson books. I'm always scouring eBay, looking for good deals and it's just become my kryptonite now. I cannot say no to a good deal on a Sean Hudson book or books if it comes in the hall. So I picked this book because it was mentioned in an interview that Sean was giving on a on this specific book that it was banned in the Pacific shop over here in the UK. And I just wanted to pick it up to see why it was that was the case. And funny thing as well, this book actually mentions that very same shop. So that's kind of funny when you think about it. So before I get into this video, let me just say my usual things here, that this is going to be a spoiler free video and this is going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding this book. Also, I want to say a additional warning here, guys, that if you're easily offended, this may not be the type of video for you to watch. Sean writes some very outrageous things and he talks about and discusses about subjects and elements in day-to-day -day society that other authors may steer clear away from or definitely steer, steer, clear, steer clear away from them. So if you're easily offended, this may not be the type of video for you to watch and Sean is definitely not the author that you should be reading. Also, some trigger warnings here guys. This book references and mentions the adult film industry. And yes, you do know what I mean by that. So as a result, it does feature loads of explicit sexual scenes. One of them contains an infant, which they don't do anything with it. They just have it in the background, but that is probably what upset the bookshop. It does actually mention child abandonment and also child endangerment as well. As well as some minor scenes with drugs and alcohol, so be warned if that may trigger you guys. So as I said, this book opens up by introducing us to this underground adult film industry that there's this that there's this group of guys that are filming all these very hardcore sexual scenes and recording them and selling them to countries and anyone that wants to buy them and they're obviously doing this because they are in a business and they want to try to make some money this book also uh, includes uh, elements of homelessness it does mention very briefly about people that are living on the streets and are living rough. Some of these characters that we come across are homeless and it does actually mention them as well. It isn't really a massive plot point but it is there. So our main character is a detective called Nick Ryan who is a workaholic. He is obsessed about working. That's all he seems to want to do. And he seems to be a type of guy that wants to keep himself to himself and get on with the day-to-day -day life of doing what he does and getting paid for it and jumping from one job to the next. And Nick is either mentioned as Nick or Ryan, so that may be a bit confusing at first, but trust me, you do get used to it. Nick has a daughter as well, which he loves so much but he doesn't see her that much, which the daughter is very upset that, that Nick doesn't see her all the time. And that's something that she wants to change. And Nick wants this to actually happen as well, but he says that he's always working and he tells this to his ex-wife who knows this, but she tells him that, look, you've got a daughter, you've got responsibilities, and you know, your daughter basically needs you to comfort her and be a dad to her and we find that there is a stepfather that is taking care of Nick's daughter and he's also in a relationship with his ex-wife 
he doesn't like Nick whatsoever. They tolerate each other, but at first he's kind of extremely jealous that she's always going to see him and Nick's daughter is always trying to visit him. And he just says that it's either him or me, basically, and he just wants them to cut off all connections with Nick. We are also introduced to a man called Kieran. At first he is wandering around the streets, going to different train stations, and he's wandering around aimlessly with a photograph of his missing or runaway sister. All he seems to care about is finding his runaway sister. And we find out what happened to her. He befriends Nick. Um, in circumstances which I'll mention in a minute. And Kieran is a very focused individual. He's a very loyal and dear friend, but, and a very nice person, but he just wants to try and find his sister. So as the story progresses, we find out that the man who is the stepfather to Nick's daughter is also a man that is kind of responsible or connected with the with this company Lee that's recording all this extreme adult material and he gets on their bad side and one day they uh, they actually say that they've had enough of him and they break into his house attack his wife and kidnap Nick's daughter and this is very distressing for him as he knows who has actually kidnapped his daughter and he's even more distressed about when they actually film a sexual scene with her and send him the videotape as kind of a hostage type of thing saying right if you don't give us a certain amount of money by a certain time frame we will kill your daughter and they send him this tape so he tried to upset him and wind him up and all that and it's, and it's a very distressing scene that's the scene with the infant in the background which again they don't do anything with the infants it's just there so he knows that he is in trouble and he needs help but he has been told that if he contacts the police or any body in that working environment that they will kill his stepdaughter. So he goes to find Nick and shows him the videotape. And as you can imagine, Nick is fueled with anger and he wants to find his daughter and rescue her and bring her back. Basically do a John Rambo. Going back to Kieran now. As Kieran is trying to find his sister, he is going to all the different locations that she might be. We, I'm actually not sure about where he found this out, but he's always trying to call these adults, these um, adult hotlines, you know, these numbers which you ring up. So he knows somehow that she is in the adult industry. And when he is scoping out this location, which he thinks that she was at, he comes across this unique individual called Stevie. Now, I thought Stevie was a male character at first, but we, but I soon discovered that it was a female prostitute slash escort woman. And she is very um, no-nonsense. She's very headstrong. She's very streetwise. And she tells Kieran that, yeah, I saw your sister. She was staying here with me, and but um, the police got involved, so we had to basically scatter and go someplace else. So very quickly, Kieran and Stevie meet up or come into contact with Nick. Nick knows that at this point that Stevie was in the film adult you know, the adult film industry. So he shows Kieran and Stevie the videotape of his daughter, Kelly, and he basically does this to, I don't know, um, to see if she can 
recognize any of the people in the video or any of the locations or what. Um, and we find out that the, well, one of the men responsible owes her some money. So they kind of form a group because she wants to get her money from this guy. And Stevie tells Kieran that this man knows where or may possibly know where his missing sister is. So that's why Kieran goes with them. And Nick knows that if he finds this man, then there's a high possibility that he will find his daughter, Kelly. So driven by all these needs, they track down this individual. And yeah, um, it ends with a massive gunfight that is extremely entertaining and thrilling. We never know what's going to happen, or I didn't anyway. And characters do die in this. There's um, some characters that I wasn't expecting to get killed off, but they did. Even though, despite the fact that this book revolves for the majority of the time around the adult film industry, it is written in a very good way. It's, I mean, Somebody said that that um, Sean Hudson's writing style and his novels are basically trash. And to an extent they are, but his writing style is so easy to read and his characters are so realistic and grounded. And you just want to know what happens to them and what happens on their journey and you want to root for them. But as I said, Sean writes a lot about all this macabre and taboo subjects so that may upset certain people but it doesn't upset me. This book, despite its upsetting moments and subjects, this was a very excellent read. Not as good as Erebus but still very good. I have still no idea why it was called Deadhead. Um, it might have been explained very briefly in the book, or it might have been glossed over very, very fast and briefly. If you know why this is called Deadhead, please comment down below. I would really be interested to know why that is the case. But what I'm gonna rate this book is a four stars out of five. Not as, not, not as good as Erebus, but still a very interesting book that I really enjoyed. So that's it guys, that is my review on Deadhead. Hopefully I have done it justice, hopefully I've explained myself properly. Let me know if you have read Deadhead, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you kind of in the middle? Have I maybe encouraged you or inspired you to pick this book up? Have you read anything else by Sean Hudson? If you have, please comment down below. If you have any recommendations as well for where you think I should go next with this author, please comment down below and I will take under consideration. As I said, I've got a small haul of his books in my room, so chances are I've probably got it. So with all that out of the way, have a great day, read some awesome books, and I will see you all in my next video.